cheer. And the second practice is the way we talk. We call it affirmative prayer. But how do you talk? The words of your mouth are blessings or cursings. Every word either lifts you higher. When we sang, if you listen to the words that were in the first hymnal about praise and God and everything lifted, every word in that song lifted, lifted, lifted. But oftentimes we just get caught, we're just patterned and programmed, and we don't pay attention. So we need to have a practice that we know. And when I was here two years ago, the practice I shared was apocatastasis, God, that's great. And some of you, it was a snowstorm, so maybe you weren't here. <laughs> but anyway, apocatastasis, God's that great, is from a story that Jack Boland told. This guy wanted to be a cattle rancher, and so he sold everything. He was an executive for General Motors. And he bought tens of thousands of acres in Oklahoma and used all of his money, saved just enough to drill from water. And every time he would drill for water, it would come up dry. And every time he would call Jack, Jack would say, apple catastasis, that's great, something wonderful is happening. And the guy's watching his money go and watching his money go, but you know, Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We need to live in that vibration. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. So the guy goes through the bank's money. He's got a few thousand left. And he calls Jack and says, Jack, apocatastasis, something wonderful has happened. This guy never did hit water, but he hit the largest oil gusher in all of Oklahoma history. So he has his head of cattle, he has his dream, and he brings in bottled water. Abacatastasis. <laughs> Are you going to get fired this week? Abacatastasis. Something wonderful is going to happen. You see, the brain is going to take you up or take you down because the way we're patterned. And so abacatastasis, or Edwin Gaines says, God, that's great. But you need to have one of those that works for you. Abacatastasis, God, that's wonderful. I have a flat tire. Abacatastasis. If I could tell you how many women have met their beloved when they had a flat tire on the road, I don't know, but I hear it all the time. <laughs> abacatastasis, something wonderful. You know, the universe is always working on your behalf. The third principle that you just have to practice with relentlessly, the way an alcoholic doesn't take a drink, you have to give up resentment, blame. You have to forgive no matter what. If it takes you getting down on your knees and asking for help, get down on your knees and ask for help. Because the universe omnipresence, remember the omnipresence all the time in the darkest moment of your life, the infinite goodness of God is fully present. And what blocks it? Our resentments. The Course in Miracles says the light, the, my grievances hide the light of the world in me. It's just like that hose, you've heard this a hundred times. Every complaint you have, every thought that life should be different than it is, just puts a little bit of kink in that garden hose, which wants to source you with infinite good all the time. Forgive. You know, I did the whole ponopono with the people that wanted to sue me. They even got an attorney. And I just, by that time, I was so in love. I was loving the attorney. <laughs> and just so you know, I did close escrow. Um, the money just came from another source. The person that wasn't able to pay me, still isn't able to pay me, I forgive her because what am I going to do? Am I going to be unhappy for one moment because life went a little different? I love the line of the Dalai Lama that's on your book. I just don't judge the universe. It does what the universe does. My good doesn't come from somebody who has my money, right? If it was my money, I'd have it, right? So it's out there circulating. It'll come back when I need it. But I'm closing escrow. All is good. The fourth principle, silence, watching your words, forgiving all the time, is generosity. Michael Beck was said that one of the most important things that he ever learned, he was three years old, three years old. He's sitting on his grandpa's knee and his grandpa told him, never ever miss a chance to give. Never ever. Your daily word today tells you if you give, spa. You didn't read it, I thought you would read it, but here I'm gonna get, right here. So it says, the point is this, says Paul, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. And that's not just about money. It sure is about money. If money's your issue, then you want to be tithing and all. But it's about kindness. It's about praise. It's about um, encouragement. 
You don't want to be miserly in the way that you encourage the people you live with, the praise the people you work with. You want to sh shower them. Because as you give, you receive. And if your life isn't flowing with golden light and golden love and you're not feeling the presence all the time, look at the silence, look at your words, ask your friends to coach you how many times you're negative. You know, how many times you just a little bit of a complaint? You know, you're reading the newspaper and you have to make a few comments, right? The newspaper is your prayer list. That's all that newspaper is. There's six and a half billion people. I don't know how big your newspaper is. In Maui, you can read it in about, what, four minutes. But that, who decides what is news? But if it's come to your attention, you're going to send love and light. You're going to send comfort. You're going to send blessings. The life and death is in the power of your tongue. And the final one, the final one is you are forgiving and you're generous is sacred service. You know, it's such an honor to meet. Jim Bainey is here today. Jim, where are you? Where are you? Jim. Right here. Jim. Jim Bainey. Jim Bainey. You will applaud. Jim Bainey and a group of people at Overland Park had a vision to build a Habitat for Humanity. They got it through the visioning process. Spirit told them what to do. They did it all on their own. Basically, we gave them a couple moments on the platform, and they raised the money. And Jim has gone on and completed 26 Habitat for Humanity houses all over the world. He went in. From So when Martin Luther King Jr. said that we can live in perpetual bliss, is anybody up for that? We can live in the world and still be of good cheer. Because he says what we all need to do is discover our spiritual gifts. I have the gift of teaching. And, uh, and you have gifts that are yours. And Jim obviously has the gift of building and probably administration because they took them all over the world to kind of head up things. But we have gifts of mercy and compassion and building an organization and leadership. Everybody has gifts. When you discover those gifts, not my gifts, not your gifts, but your gifts, just your gifts, and you give them into real service, into real needs, you set up perpetual, perpetual bliss. Now, obviously, somebody like Gandhi and somebody like Martin Luther King, they had the gift of martyrdom. Let me tell you, most people don't get that one, so you can relax. But when Gandhi was killed after he freed his country, the first word out of his mouth was wrong, God. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I may not get to the mountaintop with you, but be of good cheer, because I've seen. He was filled with joy. So you and I are here to live in joy, to be of good cheer in all the circumstances. We listen. The infinite goodness tells us what to do every minute, every minute. We affirm, we make sure the words of our mouths and the thoughts are worthy of an awakening being. And we change them when they're not and forgive ourselves quickly, right? Forgive ourselves quickly and forgive everyone else. And we give and we step into service. Albert Schweitzer said, I may never have the privilege of meeting you. And I could say that to you and you could say it to anyone in this room. But I know something absolutely true about you. Unless you find a way to love and serve, you will never be completely happy. So I just invite you to step into that. And I pray for Unity of Temple, this vibration of amazing grace and amazing blessing to our planet. I pray that you always see the best of life, the best of love, and the very best of everyone, including me. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Amen.